our paramedic, and then I'll also happy to take any questions after that. Thanks, Minister. Um, the Bill 412 marked up as a police helicopter is exactly the same as the Bill 412 marked up as a uh, aircraft. Um, they are identical and they are, have the same abilities and they can fly interchangeable missions. Um, until recently, they were all, all painted up the same. Um, but from a policing perspective, we're trying to reposition ourselves to provide a, a highly visible policing presence, not only on the ground but in the air. And the, the new livery that we have here today uh, certainly uh, makes it very clear that it's, it's a police helicopter. But that doesn't mean it won't still attend to medical retrieval as part of our life-saving rescue missions. The, the, the utility of, of the, the uh, helicopter hasn't changed, except it is a twin-engine helicopter. The one that it's replacing uh, is a single-engine helicopter. And um, the CASA requirements of changing uh, what you can fly over the urban areas uh, and therefore we've changed the helicopter, but there's some real bonuses for us. Um, in the last 12 months, um, the State Rescue Helicopter Service has flown about 650 police missions, uh, and of those um, re have resulted in uh, 21 officers in Perth being located and about 135 uh, offenders uh, apprehended on the ground. So as you can see, it's, it's, a, it's a real bonus for us. Um, we have 15 tactical flying officers now dedicated uh, to the role of supporting police missions and also uh, search and rescue missions. So we're, we're really getting ourselves into a position um, where the community can feel safer and, and we've got that highly visible deterrent uh, in the air and the community can also see when it's up and they can reassure the uh, I'll hand over now to uh, Metzdar up here. Thank you, Noel. It's uh, fantastic that now we have the capability of three identical helicopters as the Minister and also as Noel have said, to be able to do our jobs. Over 650 medical missions, of which 34 of those can be winch rescues each year, and now to have three identical aircraft, the Bill 412, that we can get in and out of, whether it's a do search and rescue medical missions uh, or winch uh, paramedic rescues, it's great to have that uh, capability. The uh, change of the CASA regulations so that we don't have single engine helicopters over build up areas has afforded us this ability now uh, and it's uh, nice also to have the livery. Uh, it is a shiny livery and I hope that none of you get to see it and uh, if you do uh, you'll certainly know that we're there to uh, help you throughout uh, the state of South Australia. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Andrew. Just a little bit of a brief rundown. We had an incident uh, using basically one of the new liveried aircraft only on Saturday. A gentleman in his mid 30s was uh, doing some camping up at Madam Falls area. Unfortunately for him, he had a little bit of a trip and a fall and rolled approximately 20 metres down an embankment. Um, he was able to be assisted by um, where SAS, SAFOL, CFS, and SES were all able to assist with uh, making him safe, uh, administering first aid and primary health care. Um, we decided that because of the nature of uh, being able to carry him out decided that the helicopter was going to be the best option for us. Um, as any time when we do a, winch, a winch rescue or we consider doing it, it's a calculated risk. There's a whole lot of things that we need to consider. The, um, the state of the patient, are they time critical? Yes, they do really well to carry them dry. And then the other, the, the big other side of the point is the fact that we need to look after our rescuers as well. So as easy as it sounds, we can carry somebody out in a stretcher. Often that's not the case. Similar to what happened on Saturday, it was windy and it was cold, all the surfaces were wet, there was lots of trip and, uh, and hazards there. So we elected to use the aircraft. Um, he was successfully uh, winched out of the gorge, out off the top of the rocks, um, and then taken down to the Royal Adelaide Hospital where he received medical treatment. John, do you mind me asking your last name as well, if that's okay? Oh uh, yeah, Paul, H-A-L-L, John Wonderful. Paul. Wonderful. And would you mind just talking us through the capabilities of the chopper that uh, have allowed you to undertake that rescue at the weekend? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so the Bell 412, as you can see, um, both of them, um, the safe hole livery up machine as well, plus the third aircraft as well, which you've got out as a spare, all have, uh, have an electric um, hoist capability, so they have a, a basic electric winch on the side of them. So with all, all the training that we do, so the special operations team paramedics are the ones that undertake that in the state of South Australia, do quite extensive training um, uh, on land and in water, um, off of ships, um, wherever we need to go. 
And so we train um, and do practice winches at least four times a year, amongst other currencies and things that we do, let alone a selection process of actually becoming a rescue paramedic and retrieval paramedic as well. It's uh, quite intensive. Um, so what we did with him the other day, we were able to walk in carrying most of our equipment um, and then with a stretcher that we put together, like a carrying basket type of stretcher, um, we able to give IV access, um, give him some pain relief, make him comfortable, look after his breathing, circulation, standard things that you can do, um, and then put him in the stretcher and winch him out and carry him into the helicopter, where we then landed on nearby um, and we uh, worked as, with a critical team, a critical care medical team, to um, assess his injuries even further, um, and then again make him comfortable, make sure that he was okay from his primary survey, secondary survey, and intake. How many team members were involved in that rescue? So there was uh, three of us on Saturday. Uh, there was myself, one of my colleagues, another rescue paramedic, um, and one of our um, intensivist um, doctors who came on the team as well. There was a little bit of reconfiguring that needed to happen. Um, often, if we know that it's going to be just a standard winch rescue, we'll just take certain pieces of equipment out of the aircraft before we take off. But again, liaising with the Babcock um, helicopter guys, who these guys fly around the state all the time, and they're always going into places that are not necessarily designated as, as air, airfield. So our pilot and crewman had extensive knowledge of that area where we were able to land on and actually decant a lot of the gear out of the aircraft um, and reconfigure it so that we could do the winch. We came back and landed on, reconfigured again, so we're, we're basically back to our primary healthcare perspective um, and then take them away. So there was the three of us, plus the pilot and the air crewman who um, operates the winch and also assists with the navigation and running of the aircraft. Considering the conditions you spoke about, um, I guess how much of a testament was it to the team that the outcome has been so good for, for that man? Um, I, I think that there's a lot to do with the training. Again, um, it, it does come down to this is what we're doing, this is what we're training for, this is what we work for, but it is very much a team effort. And we cannot go past the, the safety control that we had. We had SAS volunteers, SAS paid staff, SES and CFS as well, so we had we had plenty of opportunities and options to be able to undertake something different if we were unable to do one of the things that we were trying to do. And obviously a great relief for you guys when the outcome is this, this way that man was not seriously injured and able to be rescued. Yeah, definitely. He was certainly lucky. He sustained some head injuries um, and, and potential internal injuries, which um, you know, we haven't had any problem with at the moment. But yes, most definitely he was, um, he was lucky. Um, but again, we're, we're lucky with the resources that we've got here um, that we can actually implement these aircraft. Um, our levels of training and our medical knowledge, as well as the, the specialist medical care that we can do as an addition to the rescue program, is uh, again, a good thing for the public of South Australia. Wonderful. And um, are you able to speak to the um, specific capabilities of the choppers just um, a, a bit further? Uh, someone from Babcock? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Um, so you want to know how far we go? Uh, I just did it. basically go is, is an hour's flying time, yep. so we can go out and out, and back and out, without yep. a need to, to refuel, anything longer than that. We sorry, sorry, if you want to add on to that. Then... That's okay, I think, yeah, um, maybe if we just grab the Minister just quickly in relation to the rebranding yep. element, then if that's okay, maybe just run me through the um, the purpose for the rebranding and the, the cost, I, I guess, and, and what it achieves. Sure, yeah, so from time to time, uh, these uh, specific aircraft are rebranded. Uh, what it does, especially from the police point of view, is it does provide our crooks out there with a deterrent. I mean, you really don't want one of these chasing you uh, behind you. And they have been utilised to great effect, especially in, ba in being able to help with operational uh, police uh, pursuits, car pursuits. So uh, they, they play a vital role uh, in, in, a, in being a deterrent effect, but they also play a vital role uh, in making sure that we also inform the public uh, that police are out there uh, doing great work. Uh, they these these helicopters really are our uh, our high flying heroes. That's for sure. And the same with uh, from from a South point of view, it's really important that uh, people see these up in the air uh, and they know that if they do get in trouble, uh, that these these choppers are there uh, to be able to play a, a vital role. In terms of the exact costs, I can certainly get that for you. How does the technology stack up to you know other systems across the country? It's obviously state of the art. Um, yeah, absolutely. This is absolutely state-of-the-art tech. We've got a great partnership in all of our emergency services. Uh, obviously, you need people on the ground, uh, but it's really important that you also have eyes and ears up in the air as well. And uh, just in relation to um, the specific capabilities, how have you seen from a time perspective, um, I guess, the, um, the correlation with the use of these choppers? 
But this, there's no doubt this is a vital capability. Uh, uh, often what you see is that uh, uh, pole air, uh, the helicopters will be up in the air, uh, keeping an eye on, on things. There's no doubt that these helicopters play a vital role uh, in being able to assist uh, police with their surveillance duties, but also uh, to serve as a, a huge deterrent uh, to deter people from committing crime as well. Uh, collectively, we've seen over uh, 1,200 missions each and every year. Uh, and if we need to do more, then of course we'll look at providing more resources to do so as well. And from a rescue and recovery point of view, obviously a relief for South Australians to know that there's such a skilled team is on hold in case something goes wrong. Absolutely. Look, we're very fortunate here in South Australia that people are able to explore our, our beautiful uh, regions and also remote areas. So, look, hopefully we don't need them, but it's nice to know that we've got this protection, we've got the support if we need it. Do you guys have any anything so, here? So these are all twin engine machines. Yes. Yes. Uh, and the single engine machines have been retired now. They've got retired CASA regulation, Civil Aviation Safety Authority. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. So uh, the changes in the CASA regulations uh, mean that as of December of this year, there will no longer be able to be uh, single engine aircraft over build up areas. That's required to change. Uh, the benefit for us is three identical helicopters that all services can use uh, under a joint contract to be able to protect the state of South Australia whether it's from policing, search and rescue. As we were saying earlier, they can travel to the air out, and now back, immediately refuel. Uh, anything longer than that, it's more efficient to use a, a fixed wing. But the uh, the beauty of the, the helicopter is so on the weekend, able to get into tight spots, able to land in, sm in small areas. And the benefit from our point of view, from medical, is we can go point to point. We can go to where the injury is or where the person is in a, in a uh, medical facility, and then land at one of the three major hospitals here in, uh, in Adelaide without having to do road legs. The other benefit is we have the purpose-built rescue and retrieval aviation base next door to the facility that we're able to be here within 60 seconds. Uh, I've actually asked for the helicopter's proximity uh, to the base for the rescuers, uh, be that uh, the, the rescue paramedics or the medical staff is extremely close and, and extremely beneficial. It's great to have three interchangeable helicopters that we can use within uh, the state of South Australia. When did those regulations change? They um, won't be changing until December of this year. Okay, so this is um, preempting. This is preempting mainly because, as you can see, there's two helicopters here today. The third helicopter, as you know, they have to go undergo regular maintenance. It's in Coffs Harbour at the moment, being uh, uh, going through its maintenance. Uh, once it returns, the helicopter you see behind us in red and white, Rescue 52, will be going off for its uh, major service as well. Hence the ability to interchange uh, the aircraft that we currently have. Yep. All good? Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for your time. Thanks.